52% of workers say they're least likely to get along with someone from a different generation. And it's not slowing down because 62% of Generation Z anticipate challenges working with baby boomers and Generation X, yet only 5% of Generation Z anticipate challenges working with millennials. So the data is clear. There's a clear gap between the emerging generations and the established generations. And if we're at first not aware that that gap exists and then we're not equipped with strategies to close that gap, that gap will continue to grow. And you'll find yourself more and more disconnected from the folks that you serve alongside. You're gonna find yourself more and more disconnected from the patients you serve. Your first Uber ride, in the back of your mind, as you're approaching the destination, you're thinking, what happens next? How do I complete this ride? Some of you might have been thinking, oh, do I need to pull out a credit card to swipe my credit card? That doesn't need to happen. There's no credit card machine inside the vehicle. Some of you might have been thinking, oh, do I need to pull out the application and execute something to complete the ride? That doesn't need to happen. And then others of you, if you're a millennial like me or a Gen Z, or you really start to panic because you're thinking, oh, no. Does this driver expect a cash tip? That's a problem, right? For the emerging generations? Because we left our cash in the 90s? Because of advances in technology, because of advances in medicine, you and I are living longer. If we're living longer, we're gonna be working longer. So right now, you're communicating, you're working across four different generations, but in the very, very near future, you're gonna be working across five, six, seven different generations in the very near future. So the tensions that you and I are experiencing, working, communicating, recruiting across generations will only intensify moving forward. Generations are clues, they're not absolutes. But in my opinion, and I think you're gonna agree with me after our time together, they're very big clues on how you lead, communicate, sell. So again, a better understanding we have of each generation, the better equipped we are to thrive in today's multi-generational marketplace. You have two questions in the back of your mind anytime you come to a session like this. And those two questions are simply, so what and what now? The first question, so what, you're thinking, why is this relevant to me? So we're gonna satisfy that first question you have with, and I'm gonna talk about the next generation. Who are they? Why is today different? So once I've satisfied that first question, the back of your mind of so what, the next logical question is what can I do with this information? I'm gonna give you three simple strategies to engage this next generation. For the first time ever, we have an emerging generation that has skills and knowledge that previous generations don't have. That's never been the case in the past and that's causing all kinds of friction in the workplace. You might be asking yourself that very question, doesn't every generation want these three things at work? And the short answer to that, I, I believe, is yes. Yes, they do. I think all of us, no matter your generation, if we boil it down, these are the three things we want at work. But here's the wrench, here's the X factor. These three things for previous generations were nice to haves, but for the emerging generation, these three things are conditions of employment. Not too long ago, I was speaking to a group of 500 folks, much more intimate than today. And we were doing a Q&A portion, and at the end of my talk, we did some Q&A, and the gentleman in the front row asked a tremendous question. I did the best I could to give him the best response I could, and I ended my response to his question by saying, because if not, your next-gen employee will use LinkedIn to find a new job by lunch. I was being a little bit overdramatic because I wanted to nudge the individual into some action. I wanted them to start thinking differently and give them some urgency. But when I said that comment, there was a brave young professional in the back of the room. She stood up, she shouted out across 500 people. She shouted out, why wait until lunch? <laughs> One out of four Generation Zers now expect augmented reality or virtual reality experiences at work. That shouldn't surprise any of us in this room because the technology's been in their hands for the last five years. So we've gotta be students of all these things that are happening around us because it's changing the behaviors of our customers. 
The next generation provides data points into what's next. What's next for your leadership? What's next for your communication? What's next for fill in the blank? Now more than ever, if you and I have a better understanding of the emerging generations, we are better equipped as professionals to lead, communicate, work in the 21st century. Number one, it's the reason they join an organization. Number two, it's the reason that they're gonna stay there. And number three, learning and development's the, the top reason that they'll leave an organization if they're not getting it. So if your goal is to attract and retain next generation talent, learning and development is perhaps one of the biggest levers you can pull. A this is always how we've done it mindset is a slippery slope to irrelevance. Now more than ever, I hope I've made that abundantly clear. So what we need to do instead, we need to prioritize why over the way. We need to be married to the mission of our organizations, but we only date the approach because the approach is ever evolving and there's things that are gonna be always changing, so we gotta remain adaptive. But this is also true of all of us, no matter your generation, if you can't remember what it was like before the automobile, then to you, or, or Atari, Atari 2600, was it? Okay, yeah, if you can't remember a world before Atari 2600, to you it's not an invention, it's standard, and that's where your expectations start. Because things are moving so rapidly, all of our expectations are, are cranking up, but for the emerging generations, they're rapidly evolving. And so yes, millennials, and yes, Generation Z are going to be demanding a lot of change, there's no doubt. But the bigger picture here that all of us have to get our arms around, it's the exponential times that we live and we work in that is forcing us to change. So just know, if you leave a voicemail for Gen Z, it's gonna die a lonely, lonely, lonely death in the sea of unheard voicemails. Uh, speaking of voicemails, my mother has a podcast, and if any of you are interested in listening to it, you would just need the passcode to my voicemail.